Time to be on set. Hello, and welcome to this special at-home edition of The Scoop. I'm Jeff Hamlin. Contingency Engineering Response Teams, or CERTs, are comprised of volunteers from multiple business lines within NAFAC Southeast that deploy usually within 24 hours in response to a natural disaster. Hurricanes are a major threat to all of our locations in the Southeast. It's the CERT's job to bring installations affected by storm damage back to full mission capability as quickly as possible. They do this by performing damage assessments to base facilities and provide that time-critical data back to regional commanders so they know where to focus repair efforts. Traditionally, CERTs use pen and paper forms to record damage assessments. For this hurricane season, the CERTs will have a mobile geographic information system, or GIS, iPad that will be used to supplement the pen and paper forms. Today, we have NAFAC Southeast Production Officer, Lieutenant Commander Nate Chenerak to tell us a little bit about this new gear. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. How will the mobile GIS system help the CERT team conduct their mission? So with this app, essentially these folks will have an iPad when they go out in the field. Uh, and it's supplemental to the paper form. So in terms of the if it is in, if it wants to be used or not so it's it should be a quicker means and a cleaner way to capture information will the data collected on the ipad be able to be transmitted back to the eoc quicker than using the traditional pen and paper forms yes it will so the the great thing about this device is that once uh there's a lap there's a laptop that we have that syncs the data it's on its own network and so there's essentially a router attached to it. So when the devices come back within range, all, all the individual has to do is just press the sync button. It automatically updates the, uh, the main, the server, which the laptop is running off of. And then it'll also update any other devices that are uh, connected to the network at that time. So people on the damage assessment team can see which facilities have had their the damage assessments conducted, but there's no confusion. Back in March, you held a mock hurricane exercise using this new gear. What kind of feedback did you get from the CERT team members? So we, we did receive feedback. We actually had two sessions where the individuals uh, on the, that have been on previous CERTs and uh, completed damage assessment forms, uh, they provided feedback in terms of what would be the best way to show information and, and then also from the standpoint of on the other side when we send that information to the estimator they can capture the information and it's and it's in a clear way that they don't have to really raise many questions and, and ask questions back out to the field and so those those issues were brought up discussed and adjustments were made on that program accordingly thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us today all right thank you the CERT will also be able to call in air support this hurricane season with the Unmanned Aircraft System, or UAS. This tool will allow the team to inspect taller structures and roofs that may be inaccessible because of storm damage, keeping the team members safe. Back in March, NAFAC Southeast held a mock hurricane exercise with the CERT to test the operational capabilities of the UAS. Our second guest today is GIS Program Manager Josh Coates, who has been a part of the command's UAS program since 2012. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. How would the UAS benefit the CERT in conducting their mission? Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it brings a lot of um, kind of added value to, to that deployment team. Um, you know, being able to kind of quickly get an eye in the sky as soon as you land um, or get to an installation after a major, major natural disaster, um, get the bird in the air in, in a couple minutes, and then really you're getting that first look at, you know, where's the damage, what's the extent, um, what are some unsafe areas, kind of identify those hazardous areas. Uh, it's just a really good tool to get that first look. And then the, the quadcopter, just being able to get um, assessments of rooftops and, and hangars and, and 
facilities that are typically harder to access and reach um, with, you know, from a safe distance and keep, keep people out of uh, harm's way. How many people does it take to operate a UAS and what are their roles and responsibilities? Um, so we like to operate with three always on any kind of mission we do, whether it's training or not. Um, we, we like to have what we call a vehicle operator. And so that's the person that's really responsible for command and control of the aircraft, maintaining the systems, pre-planning all the flight uh, details, and then just monitoring it through that entire operation. Uh, we have a vehicle spotter that works with him. His his or her responsibility is basically to keep eyes on, on the plane at all times, um, that visual line of sight that we always need to maintain. Uh, and then they're also looking out for any sort of uh, obstructions or hazards to, to the mission that could, uh, you know, cause any sort of issue. Um, so they're just constantly com communicating with, with the operator. Uh, and then the third position is just kind of an extra set of hands to, to offload data, go charge batteries when needed, you know, speak to any kind of spectators that might show up and, and want to talk and see what you're doing. Um, just, you know, keep the attention uh, away from the, the people doing the operations. Was there any key takeaways or lessons learned from the exercise you performed back in March? Yeah, so uh, always the, the, the biggest lesson learned was really just uh, the small nuances and things we weren't familiar with the new systems. Uh, these are brand new platforms for us that we just received training a few months back. So just little things that we hadn't encountered before that we had to try to adjust for on the fly. Um, so, you know, just, just knowing and being redundant and making sure that we bring an extra system, bring an extra ground control station, sensors, whatever it is, you know, make sure that we've got that uh, ability if, if something wants to happen um, to, to continue on and execute the mission. Well, that's all I have. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. With boots on the ground and eyes in the sky, the CERT has some great new tech this hurricane season designed to keep them safe and accomplish their mission quicker than before. Let's hope they don't have to use it. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and stay healthy, NAFAC Southeast.